Praise the Lord, dear friend. Thomas Matthew the fourth here. It's day 20 of my uh, time since I had this visitation from the Lord. And really, every day is a visitation, isn't it? But the thing is, God spoke about 30 days of, you know, being before Him. And really, it's all the days of our life, but <laughs> God is uh, interested in us being very serious with Him. I think a lot of people have lost the fear of God. Remember the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning. So I want to tell you that uh, we need to really get back to the basics of when we were first saved and find our first love again. Even preachers, you know. Do you not... I keep turning my head here because I'm turning this. I, I, I found myself listening to somebody preaching and I was like... Um, I, I was saying like, you know... I'm, I'm more interested right now, listen to this, this is really heavy what I'm going to say, and every preacher needs to hear me, every anointed person, every gifted person needs to hear this, I was like, I'm more interested in being right with you, God, directly with you, than I am in all the other things of what happens in the external by the gifting and the anointing, because the anointing can be flowing, and... You still have areas in your life that you need to fix, you know? And this is true for a lot of people. This is true for everybody. Don't think because God uses you here and there and a few times that everything is just honky-dory in your life with absolutely everything about everything. Because there's things you still need to take care of. And I'm very interested in this time. This has been my prayer focus. That God wants us to... Um, I'm telling I'm seeing the most amazing skylines here. I'm just taking some pictures of some. The Lord is very interested in us being very, very tight and right with Him. More than just doing things that we've been been doing along the way. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just declare right now that you're going to cause uh, your power, your might, your rulership, your dominion for us to happen in the external. Yes, we pray for that, but before that, we pray it happens in the internal. And Lord, that you be glorified in everything that we need to be doing and getting accomplished in this day and hour like never, ever before in our life. It is that time now, says the Lord, when I'm going to begin to, what well, I'm just starting to prophesy here, that when I'm going to begin to shine my spotlight from heaven upon you to show you everything that needs to be sorted, everything that needs to be worked on, everything in your character, everything in your um, life on earth, relationships and situations, all types of things that from A to Z, top to bottom, bottom to top, side to side, left to right, up and down, in and out. Because re revival, uh, you know, really starts from within, you know. Let me say this. All these catchwords we use, awakening, renewal, renewing, revival, reformation. I like the word revolution better than all of that because you have to revolt against man's systems, even in the religious genres and arenas to uh, really get 
things done in a powerful way. People used to call me a missionary, and I understand what they're saying. It means I've left the homeland and gone to another land. But usually a missionary is one who's sent by an organization with their ways and ideologies of things to do things, you know. And I thought, I'm not a missionary. God sent me, so I'm, a, I'm really a revolutionary and a reformer more than I am a missionary. But revival is not just the external. It starts with the internal. I was in a conference uh, of last week and was called upon to, to minister a word and a lot of people were sharing and a lot of people were like having a lot of you know input and stuff and I just sat quiet listening. I was pretty just in a mode of listening and, and finally the leader, the apostle called on, upon me to speak and I shared one experience I had and when a great revival broke out and there's a Greek word kenosis, K-E-N-O-S-I-S I believe it's spelled and uh, it means the exchange of one for another. It means the emptying out of one and the filling in of something else. A really graphic, kind of ugly uh, analogy definition would be like the embalming process. When they take this pump and take the blood out of the dead body and then put back in uh, uh, this embalming fluid to preserve, you know, so you're really exchanging the lifeblood for something else. I mean, that's a real exchange, like emptying out and infilling of something else. Now, I, sorry for the analogy, if it, but maybe it can make sense to somebody that way, because it's kind of a, a real analogy for that. But the Lord was, was, was talking to me about, you know, the Holy Ghost coming in, and I was speaking in this conference, and the Lord came and stood behind me while I was getting ready uh, for the meeting. And I was looking in the mirror in the bathroom, beautiful suite. We had a beautiful place there, uh, a tropical place. It was really gorgeous. And, the, you know, it was a big uh, mirror, a huge mirror. And the Lord came and stood behind me. And I was like, uh, hmm, I saw him the Holy Spirit, literally like in the form of a, of a person, but, but the, glory, the glory cloud, I can't explain all that right now, but too much, but like another time I, I might do that, but and I looked at myself again and I said, Lord, take him and you come and fill him, and there was an exchange moment, the power of God hit me and it wasn't just like so I'd shake and whatever. There was a real transference. It was a, it was an epiphany. It was a visitation from heaven. And I went out to speak in my part of the conference there. And at, at the end of my message, I was asked to speak on the subject of finances. Can you imagine that? And I did. And at the end, I went and stretched my hand and said, fire. And the power of God hit the whole place. And everybody standing. Everybody was standing in prayer. And everybody fell flat to the floor. The whole place, 100%. It was, well, like 99%. There were some people hanging on the walls on the side, some ushers and the sound crew in the back, the video crew and all that. And the Lord had me walk back there and just wave my hand and they all hit the floor. I thought, I don't have anything to do. Everybody's out. Out. So I went and sat on the platform, put my head down and was kind of weeping and praying and saying, oh, Lord. And waited until everyone came to a bit and got back up and we continued with the meeting. Now that began and commenced a revival that went on for months. Wasn't planned. It just was a sovereign thing that God came and did because he filled a vessel. So I'm praying for this, the, the infilling, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, you know, is going to come to people and through people that just cry to God and say, Lord, I want you, you know. And we don't always have to be asking for everything that we want. We can just say, Lord, I worship you. I want you. Fill me with yourself. Get into that realm of prayer because you're going to need this in your future life. Not that you need it as something to live by, you know, live in and by. I mean, I mean, for the purposes of God to be anointed. You know, it's very rare. There's a lot of preachers, okay, especially these days now. There's a lot of preachers 
Everybody's on the social media. Everybody's switching on their phone. And the Lord is... Yeah, John, a mission... The mission of God, if that's what it is, and not man's organization. That's what I was alluding to. There's a lot of times missionaries are sent by organizations or something like that. But uh, when God sends you, it's a different thing. And you go and turn over like some evil stuff. You literally become a revolutionary. Anyway, I said that. But the Lord is... Uh, Interested in filling people. So there's a lot of people, you know, carrying on with their stuff, but not a lot of power and glory. Where are the John Lakes and the Catherine Coleman's and the Charles Wesley's and the Charles Finney's, John Wesley's and the Ch Charles, yeah, Charles and John, and the Wesley's and the, uh, uh, the Branham's and the Allen's, A.A. Allen and the Shambach's and the Kenneth Hagen's and very few, there are few in our day of great men. But there's just a lot of church and not a lot of glory. The glory comes when you consecrate yourself. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we give ourselves to you afresh and anew once again. And say, here I am, I'm yours, here am I. If you want to use me, you can use me. Take me as I am, I come to you. Let's pray the First John 1 and 9 prayer. Lord, I confess anything wrong in my life to you. And I want you to cleanse me from all unrighteousness, forgive me of all sin, and cleanse me, and remove all iniquity from my life. Whatever it is that has grieved or offended you, or been uh, not according to your plan of action, for me, uh, in full depths of reality, I want to be absolved from that, and I want it to be resolved, and I want everything to be fixed and sorted out correctly. Lord, thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your protection for, for upon us in this evil world that what you've ordained will happen now. And there's not enough time. You know, there's a little post that I saw that I that I posted, I thought it was good. Said, how many, well, I, I like to ask the question in a more positive way than the way it was said. I'm, I'm a better writer than these blog writers. I'm a brilliant writer. And I'm, I'm writing some, and I'm going to take all my all my quotes and stuff like that, and we're going to get them all in print. They're going to they're get out. Don't worry, it's going to happen. You're going you're gonna to have You're going to have Yes, in Jesus' mighty name, so be it. Thank you for the help, Lord, to help us get all of our media things and writings and all out there to the world. That's where they belong. But, how, like, you ask the question, how many tomorrows do you really have? You can quantify them. You know, it's not an endless journey. I mean, there is a, fin a finite uh, time of life before we go into the infinite. The infinite. The infinite, you know, comes from the finite first ending. And really, there's a day and an hour for everybody. I, I pray, too, that God extends our life. Remember Psalm, Psalm 91, 16 says, uh, With long life, you'll satisfy us, Lord, and show us your salvation. Because our mind and heart is stayed on you. This week, I want to give you, today, I want to give you an assignment. I want you to begin to just thank the Lord for who he is. I want you to uh, ask him to fill you. I want you to go to him and cry to him with a broken heart, with a, a contrite spirit. And say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. You know, Psalm 51, verse 10. What happened to this? I mean, I remember when I was growing up, people had a lot of, in God, I mean, you know, meetings, conferences, we'd get hit by the power of heaven. Fall on the floor and, the floor and cry. Now everybody's just so sophisticated, you know? I don't know where that visitation thing is anymore. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But it's not going to happen just because we call the conference awake or renew or revive or revive and thrive, you know? We're going to thrive in this season. We're going to survive. We're going to, well, not survive, but we're going to, you know, renewal, awakening, you know, all this stuff. It's great. 
revival, great, great. You know that those are those are good words. Those are powerful words, but it's not enough just to say them. It's more important that we live and experience them. So God is really tired of, uh, I think, all this stuff. Some people just need to just be quiet. If they don't have anything powerful to say that's going to be life-changing, I'm into essence. I'm into substance. My dear friend, I thought about you all day today, and here you are. Wherefore art thou, O Romeo and Juliet? I was going to do the Shakespearean chant for you. Timothy James Walker, great, very gifted man. John Lancer, good to see you. Maximo de Leon, my friend in New Jersey. God bless you. Matt and Amy Carpenter. Yeah, and everybody else is coming on. Forgive me, I'd like to say hi to everybody. Paul Macharia, God bless you. I don't want to forget you. You're always on. John Bell, there you are again. Someone named Margaret. You, someone has the Facebook name Margaret with no other name. You're really special if you just got it like that. You should try to get Margaret.com. <laughs> that uh, domain will be worth a lot of money, you know, later on if you want to sell it, not use it. So uh, there is money in that if you feel like flipping a domain if you get a good one. But if you get a good one, you really want to use it. And once you're using it, that's it, you know. They told me my domain and my website is worth money. I thought, I've been using it for years and people have it for my website. Not for sale. Can't sell it. What are you going to do? It's myname.com. What are you going to do with that? And others that are my ministry organization, dot, dot. How on earth are you going to, uh, you know. Oh, yeah, this is nice. So... We need, we need to come with substance. You know, like, if I'm listening to someone, as I was saying, I like to learn something. Tell me something I don't know, man. Don't tell me the obvious. But then there's people that, like, come with a simple word or just, like, a few verses or something, but there's power behind it to bring an experience in the spirit and release something from heaven to you that you didn't have before. That's what we need. That's what, that's the purpose of church. You know, the Lord spoke to me, and I'm, was writing a book, but some of the files were lost. I have to do it all over again. What I can remember one day, I hope I'll get to it. Uh, the, the, the definition of the church in God's mind, and I'm writing a book. I won't tell you the title now. I don't want anybody to grab my title. It's a powerful title, and I will write that book in Jesus' name. Lord, help me. I got to get back and re redo all those uh, the notes in it and all that. But the Lord spoke to me and said, my purpose for... Uh, 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 people congregating and coming together is 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 for the training for reigning. You know, like a place where I'll manifest myself and teach people, mentor them, train them, impart to them, impact them, reveal myself to them, enlighten them, empower them, and they go out to, to shake the world. Now, just based on that alone, what I said, and I don't want to take time to repeat it right now. I'm, in, I'm kind of in a flow. I'm about, about to step into another meeting in, in about five minutes. but So I'm just going to be uh, with you a couple more minutes. But the Lord s said that's what he wants to do. So is that happening everywhere, every day? Of course not. I've gone to places and left feeling worse than when I went. I don't understand how that happened. I guess I just wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> Well, there just wasn't any God connection in the thing, you know. You, I remember one time I drove so far to go to a meet, a series of meetings, and like back and forth a few times, and then I just said, "What am I doing?" I left early, was grieved, something was very wrong, and you know, goofy stuff going on in the midst of it, and it was cracked up to be this, uh, you know, this great thing, you know, revival, and, and for me. I've gone to churches and just thought, you know, going to this church, I mean, to speak and preach and deliver the word. And we never negate or neg uh, regret that because someone's going to get blessed. But just 
the atmosphere, way, the way the thing was going, it wasn't leading to anything. You know? It just wasn't good enough, my, in my estimation. For what the big thing that God wanted to do was disappointing. So I want to challenge everybody. The way you fix all these things is schisms and isms and problems and uh, lacks of things uh, is, is to get yourself uh, on the tight program and go back to God and say, look here, Father, I need help. God, I feel like crying when I say it. I need you. I need you. I need you, 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 you. I mean, what What am I doing if I don't have your hand upon my life? The God's hand is upon my life. We've, we've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears open, cripples walk, people healed of terminal diseases. God's using me to prophesy elections for millions of people. Brazil and Kenya and all these other countries, even America with President Trump and all that. All, all of these things and dethrone the other ones and make sure he got elected. Pray to me. You know, so much has happened around the world. Like in the nation of Kenya, it's been a phenomenon for, for 18 years or ni 19 years now, almost 20 years. Every election that's happened in that country, God put me on national television to speak and declare, national media to, to, to declare what was going to happen in the election. And it happened. You know, you can't just come out and prophesy and be wrong like that. You know, and of course, I would never go to say anything that God didn't tell me to say, but God's given me that commission. So all of these things, it's not like, you know, we haven't walked in anything or we're even walking in, you know, anything currently, of course. But there's more. And there's, there's things that God wants to talk to you about. There's things he wants to share with you. There's things, this intimacy thing. This intimacy issue between you and the Father God, between you and the Holy Spirit, between you and Jesus himself. Let's not just want his things and what he does. Let's want him. I know, you know there's a lot of people that wow, 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 religiously, wow, you know, these, I call them crybaby, wow, wow, wow. You know, and then, you know, if you get to things about that, I, that the Lord uses me to teach on success and wealth, and prosperity and power in this, you know, in in this earth, great things. Hey, no apology. It's anointed. I'm anointed for that. And you know, they don't know what to do with that. It's just oh, they're just stuck in this revival mode. And wah wah wah. It's not about man. It's about you, Jesus. You ever hear that? Blah 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 blah. And some of the same people, you know, I wonder what they're doing also. So. You don't want to be too heavenly minded that you know earthly good. You don't want to be too earthly minded that you know heavenly good. But there's a place where it all mixes together. So I'm not talking about this wah-wah, you know, nice cliche, weak, weak Christianity. No power in this world, no riches, no wealth, no honor, no dominion. And then you're just like, oh God, I just want you. And anything else you say you don't want. I want everything else for the purpose of advancing his kingdom. Hmm? The head and not the tail, the king and the priest, am I? The wealth creator, the wealth receiver, the wealth generator. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. God, in, in uh, Psalm 35, verse 27, he says he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Never forgetting any of that. But I just feel by the, by the Spirit of the Lord, we need to really pray and cry out to God and get that real strong, intimate glory connection again. We need to be emptied of some pain and woes and regrets and wrong decisions. Things that came to attack us along the way. We need to flush all that out. We need to let the waterfalls of heaven, oh God, I feel the presence of the Lord. Receive the touch right now. We need, we need that. We need that. We need a fresh, 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 fresh visitation of heaven. Just that new mantle, you know? And to be positioned in the right place at the right time for the right reason, doing the right thing. All good things happening. 
because the Lord is with us in his power. And I pray also uh, that he protect you from all the evil in this world. No harm and danger can come to you, you know. No thing that the enemy or evil people would try to plan. No system, no entity, no organization, no government, no group, no individual that cannot harm you. Because you're, you're in the palm of his hand, you're the apple of his eye. And his protection is upon you. You know, Paul said, I'm hidden in Christ with God. Means he's double dipped. I'm hidden with Christ in God. Means I'm wrapped twice. I'm wrapped by Christ, his blood, his power. And then I'm also hidden with him in God. So the enemy can't get anywhere. No. I feel a really strong, amazing... A touch right now coming I just release it upon you in Jesus name that uh, the Lord will really touch you in this in this moment in these days and just go back to him and begin to cry to him and um, you'll see the you'll see the amazing amazing fire of heaven there's a book that I've written called The Benefits of Excellence that people have asked me for. A lot of people are writing me to get it right now. And for any good love gift to the ministry, uh, you know, you want to sell $100, $50, $200, uh, $100 would be good seed. And however you feel inclined, uh, the information will be on the screen to, on the comments to... Get this book in the U.S. and Canada. We can get it in the post to you and the mail to you. And, uh, this is a, a teaching I did on the power to create wealth. Very, very awesome in a great conference uh, in Africa. And this uh, had written 40 diamond keys for your success. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And the Lord wants to do some, some amazing things in your life. But this, and thank you for partnering with us. You know, the Lord spoke to me some time back and said there are people that he's touching to, to sow and to be a great blessing to, to, to this ministry. Thomas Manton IV and Dominion. And God is going to cause uh, this to happen. And there's great treasure and great provision for... Uh, those that are walking in, in his purposes but God wants his fire on the earth remember this I'm just reminded of this scripture wow thank you Lord Luke 12 49 he says I I want my fire to be in the earth and how I wish it were already kindled already burning and Ezekiel 10 verse 2 said to, told Ezekiel to take coals of fire and put them around the city and meaning symbolic of the fire of God coming to the earth. So the Lord wants to move. The Lord wants to change things. He wants to break evil forces in this world. But he wants you to be in his hand. If you have never received Jesus seriously as, as your Savior, you can just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Savior. I want your gift of eternal life. I just want to accept it. Simple. And then the Holy Spirit and the Lord will do the rest to teach you, train you, raise you, help you walk on in your life. But first you have to open the gate to invite the Savior to come in. You have to ask him into your heart. Simple. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. And in Jesus, in your name. Cleanse me from all evil in this world, anything in life, situations. I want you in my life. I accept you. I accept that gift of salvation that you have, have, have died for me and given yourself for me to have. Simple. Simple. Just do that. Make sure you do that. Make sure you do that. Do it right now. Just talk to him for a minute. And the Lord is great. He has so many great plans, but we need to get filled with him. So let that flow happen, let that exchange process happen, let that kenosis happen, let that exchange your whatever for his, 
power, you know. Our humanity needs to embrace his divinity and we come together and there's a, there's a click, there's something that happens. And that's what the world needs is the power of God. Supernatural, miracle-working power coming through people. I pray you'll be one of his special chosen vessels in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Thank you for being my partner. There are ways to, in the comments on the screen you can, you can do that. And the website is thomasmanton.com. And there's ways to uh, become a partner there. And if you'd like to get the book and the DVD in the U.S. and Canada, we can get that to you. You can just make sure you um, get your address to us. And I think there's a way to do that. There's a portal on the website. You can type in your some comments. Do it all on the website on thomasmanton.com. Love you, gotta go. Talk to you on the next broadcast. Just some thoughts about you getting closer to him and him closer to you. Let's connect and change the world in a good way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, John, for putting that on. You can put the rest in the comments. I love you and I'll see you on the next broadcast. Amen. <laughs>